Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Saurabh Dikshit, your surgery faculty at Allen Next and your surgery mentor. So today the INICT 2023 May session has been done. Lots of questions came from GIT, lots of questions came from press. So there was a mixed reaction. But let me tell you students, the paper was conceptual. This time we didn't have any fancy syndrome based question, nothing like that. And to contrary, this time INICT did not ask a lot of trauma based questions. So general surgery was there, but it was a mix. And what I would say overall, my view was that paper was really very good and concept based. So let us try to start the recall of this. Students, before this a statutory warning that I have not framed this question. I have just tried to collect these questions from all the sources that were available and who are the sources? You people who have attempted the paper. So based upon your recall, whatever language you have used, I have tried to, you can say, capitalize that. Now I would tell you one very important thing that if you have any uh, doubt, so just type in the, you can say, comment sections that what were the correct options, what was the correct question and apart from the questions which I have recalled. So if there are any more questions, do let me know in the comment section. So let us start without wasting any time. This is what is very, very, very important. So the first question that we have, we had a lot of GIT. So we had a question on rectal prolapse. So there was a question where the patient presented to you with rectal prolapse. Now, when we talk about rectal prolapse nowadays, when we talk about the management, so management of rectal prolapse is nowadays preferred via abdomen so we go for a laparoscopic repairs so abdominal approach so abdominal repair is there versus the perineal repair students where the patients are not fit for the surgery they are the candidates who opt for the perineal repair nowadays majority of the you can say uh, sacrocolpo uh, say rectopexies they are whatever are done they are actually preferred via laparoscopic abdominal roots so we have a classical moshkovitz repair moshkovitz repair is there then we have ripstein repair ripstein repair and I, this was the question this was the one of the options when you talk about the perineal repair we have delorms repair we have delorms repair where we do a reefing of the prolapse part, reefing of the re prolapse part. Then we have a very famous perineal, you can say recto sigmoido sigmoidectomy with the rectopexy that is done. So that is altimeres. So altimeres is basically a perineal resection of the prolapse part. In Delon, we don't resect a lot. Then the third is for the patients who are, you can say, not a candidate who can afford any, you can say, type of surgical reconstructions, they are taken for Thiersch wiring. Nowadays, no one is doing this Thiersch wiring, but still this was there in the option. So when we talk about this, it's very, very, very simple. What are the options? Let us go for Altimeres procedure. It's a perineal procedure. Ripstein, it's an abdominal. Delorms, it's a perineal theory. So what is the answer? It's the Ripstein, which is a perineal approach. No, it's not. A. Next is we have one more question from GIT. So when we talk about this question, let me tell you about this very, very, very simple question. Just see this image. They have given MRCP section. So when we talk about this MRCP, what are we going to get? I have already taught you a lot of anatomy in my classes. So this is the CBD that you are seeing. So you are seeing CBD. Then this is hilum, this is the left, this is the right sectoral ducts. So when we talk about this, what are we getting? We are getting to see multiple stones in the CBD. So basically this is multiple filling defects in the CBD. So what is the answer here? Answer is very, very, very simple, straightforward. It's a case of cholelidocolithiasis. Students, if you see, if this was the image, let me tell you one more thing in this case, that there's a stone in the cystic duct also. But here there is no option like CBD stones with cystic duct stone and I don't think this is the exact image so I have not given the paper but if this was the image yes it is multiple filling defects shown on MRCP cut section and this is cholelidocolithiasis. this is what is very 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 important for you all. Let us go to the next question. This was a question on venous insufficiency again vascular we had lot of questions. One of a question which has been asked is what are the tests for SFJ insufficiency and which is not a test. So when we talk about there are a lot of clinical tests. However, the basically the investigation of choice if you talk about for SFJ incompetency is basically a Doppler assessment. So Doppler study is what but when we talk about the clinical test, 
when we talk about the clinical test what are the clinical tests we have we have a brody strandelenburg test we have a brody strandelenburg test we have a modified perthes test what do we do in brody strandelenburg test we tie a tunique we empty the we empty the limb we tie a tunique and then we actually release the tunique and check how the uh, we elevate the limb first and we empty and we tie a tunique so now we see what is the flow pattern so if it is from proximal from top to below that means it's an sfj in it's sfj incompetency why because the blood is entering from that side regurgitating if on tunique if the blood is coming from below that means it's a perforator incompetency similar way we have a modified perthes test we also have the morisse's test where we actually go for cuff impulse based assessment along with that there is a name which is known as fegan test remember student fegan test fegan test and pratt's test so fegan and pratt's test they are the test for perforator incompetency when we talk about fegan whenever you feel a perforator what do you see in this perforator there is a depression subfacial depression so that subfacial depression or pitting that is classical known as fegan's test so fegan is not for sfj incompetency next is there's a question again on git what are you seeing in front of you just see in this image also you are getting to see you are getting to see something a patient presents to you with a 6 to 8 weeks of diarrhea so dysentery and along with that upper abdominal pain ultrasound right upper quadrant pain with usg showing an hypoagglutination hypoagglutination is classically seen in case of either mets or in case of a of an abscess so basically this is not a history which is sufficient to diagnose a malignancy but yes this is suggestive of an abscess with a dysentery relation so what are you waiting for this is simple amoebic liver abscess why it is not at hydrated okay the presentation in liver scan would be a bit different hydrated have a different you can say they may be honeycombing calcification might be there might not be there but the dysentery is classically missing in this had it been a pyogenic abscess or an ascending cholangitis there is there should be a history of obstructive or jaundice should be there along with that fever etc whatever profile but diarrhea will not be there so this dysentery and along with that an hypoagglutination this gives you a classical image of amoebic liver abscess so answer for this is a classical amoebic liver abscess next is there was a question on fluids which of the following is a complication of massive blood transfusion so when we talk about massive blood transfusion what is the criteria for massive blood transfusion students it is more than equal to 10 units of blood transfusion so whenever we talk about 10 units of blood transfusion it is because of the you can say storage components which are there uh, in 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 the in the blood and its you can say products so basically there can be a variety of you can say electrolyte imbalances where all of them are right if you ask me all of them are right hypokalemia hypothermia hypomagnesemia hypocalcemia but yes because of the preservatives added to increase the shelf life there is blockage of na plus k plus atps you can say exchange pumps so basically hyperkalemia is relatively more common so all of them are right the answer of exclusion is this why because hyperkalemia is a better option here so hyperkalemia is an answer of exclusion here now let us see there were lot of question from breast also breast radiology breast pathology so when we talk about breast conservation surgery students i have not given the paper so i am not knowing the exact uh, things i have just tried taken it from the sources so again controversial options are there in lot of questions so bcs what is bcs students it's a breast conservation surgery so whenever there is a lump and we are doing it for in situ tumor or we are doing it for the invasive cancers remember you will do a wide local excision so the point number 1 that you are seeing in front of you that's a wide local excision or lumpectomy this is absolutely right students radiotherapy is not always mandatory it is mandatory if you are doing a bcs for invasive cancer and that is known as bct not bcs exactly so that is where the component of bct comes but let us see this is also right this is also right based upon the you can say based upon the options we would be going so this is also right and uh, this option is also right now intraoperative frozen section and axillary nodal dissection these two points are controversial because nowadays in order to check the you can say tumor margins that you have taken it adequate we have not left a residue some 
hospitals are doing a frozen section but it is not a standard recommendation to do it every time so this is absolutely wrong when you talk about axillary nodal dissection it may be done in cases when you are planning it for invasive cancer so if you are planning it for invasive cancer you'll go for a sentinel lymph node biopsy if it is positive you have to go for axillary lymph nodal dissection so relatively amongst them i would say c is a better answer than d uh, uh, this is what is very 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 simple because you know lot of options are controversial lot of options are very close we need to segregate the best options out of that now when we talk about one more question all uh, this is the this is the same question basically okay so there was question on nutrition so when we talk about the complication of tpn lot of time i have discussed i have a separate you can say uh, lecture i have taken on nutrition you can check that uh, in my video column so in my playlist it's there but TPN total parenteral nutrition what is parenteral nutrition delivery of elemental nutrition elemental nutrition via IV route so when you are delivering you need an excess so via either jugular or subclavian you will enter in that process you might damage the lung and its pleura so pneumothorax can happen what is refeeding syndrome it is electrolyte imbalance seen when we start the you can say the parenteral nutrition in patients who have been on starvation for a long time or have some illness or they are alcoholics so this might happen in them and what is that we get to see hypokalemia magnesemia phosphatemia amongst them hypophosphatemia is the most important thing that we get to see so refeeding syndrome can happen osteoporosis yes it can happen why because two in one they don't have lipids vitamin a d e k they are not there when vitamin d is not there yes there may be osteoporosis so that is again may be a complication but what about aspiration pneumonitis this is a important complication of enteral not parenteral so this is a very straightforward question where the option d is absolutely wrong next is let us talk about one more question that is there was a question on appendix when we talk about appendix there was a match the following base question appendix and its position so you know the most common location is retrocecal then we have pelvic then we have subcecal paracecal so based upon that they you had uh, an image based question where, where you have to ma match the following so what is a retrocecal this a is retrocecal i have made them so paracecal this is d paracecal location subcecal and pelvic so that's in front of you it's a very same simple question you can see this I'll, I'll just assume that image so these are the classical images that you are seeing so you are seeing retrocecal you are seeing the pelvic type you are seeing the paracecal and the subcecal they are very 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 simple simple things to understand let us move forward and go to next question we had a question on peripheral arterial peri peripheral arterial disease and it's it is again a very controversial question I have it's a very common question I have brought all the options which I actually got and for me all these options are wrong so if you know the correct options do tell me intermittent claudication what is claudication exercise induced pain when you start the exercise in a patient who is having the you can say uh, there is narrowing of the vessel so whenever you start with the exercise there is increased demand of the blood by the muscle and this increased demand cannot be fulfilled why because of the peripheral arterial disease so remember the patient starts to walk and after a certain distance he starts to experience the pain this is what is known as intermittent claudication which goes off when the patient takes the rest and this distance which he covers before the pain starts is known as claudication distance so in this case the pain starts on the first step absolutely wrong i will not agree to this rest pain at night nocturnal cramps are not remember nocturnal cramps are not a classical feature of peripheral arterial disease specifically in intermittent claudication the patient will have pain related to rest uh, rest pain over the tar tarsal metatarsal so nocturnal calf pains are not seen in case of intermittent claudication next is it's a most common cause of atheroma if this is the option or it is the most common cause is atheroma both of them are wrong let me tell you why it should be arterial thrombosis or you can say embolus why atheroma atheroma is nothing but a cholesterol with some platelet plugs so probably i could take if this is the option i could take c as the answer of exclusion but this is not the right uh, choice of you can say the words which have been put clinical presentation is not related to effective site this is what is very 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 important thing that you need to understand here why because whenever we talk about the claudication the site of claudication is determined the site by the start site of blockage if it is blockage at the level of aorta so auto iliac blockage so all the territory supplied by iliac that is 
you will have the claudication over the buttocks, over the thighs, over the calf. Along with that, you will also have the features of impotency because the internal, you can say iliac is not getting the sufficient breadth for the tumescence of the genital. So this is what is important. Then when you have it at the level of iliofemoral block, so all the territories after the iliac that is femoral base, they will be damaged. They will not be having sufficient blood. So you will have thigh claudication, calf claudication. Same way, femoropopliteal. So the salvage will be for the femoral territory supplied regions, but not for the popliteal. So in that case, again, student, you will have the claudication of the calf. So yes, claudication will tell you about the site of blockage. So option D is wrong. Based upon the options, I would say option C might be the answer of exclusion. But if these are the options, I would say all of them are wrong. Next is, this is again a question, it was a very straightforward question that amongst them, smoking is a risk factor. This is a multiple choice question. Maunder's disease, yes, it's a known risk factor because it's an inflammatory agent, pro-inflammatory agent, meta, you can say, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, a, things inside the smoke and one of them is metallics, metallo, metalloproteinase, MMP enzyme, which causes this intense inflammation. So Maunder's disease, yes, it's a superficial thrombophlebitis of the anterior chest wall. So inframammary region you see called like tender palpable veins. Then carcinoma, yes, it's a known risk factor. Ductectasia, yes. So fibroadenoma, everyone knows it's not associated with smoking. So it's a straightforward question, easy question. Now, USG versus mammography, not true or not an advantage. So, can differentiate between solid cystic lesion? Of course, it can differentiate. Can help you guide a biopsy? Yes, it can help you. It can help you visualize a deep lesion. Now, here, mammo is inferior and USG is having an advantage because for dense breast, this is actually useful. Not helpful in young females with dense breast? Of course, this is right. Students, if this was the, these were the options, this is the answer. If there is something other than this piece of information, do type in the comment section below what was that. So I will just correct it and then come up to you. Next is, there was a question on adrenal, the most common cause of adrenal incidentaloma. Students, what is adrenal incidentaloma? It is incidentally detected tumor. So if it is incidentally detected tumor, it has to have some silent, you can say, course of uh, pathogenesis and they are non-functioning adenomas or non-functioning tumors are actually rocking. So when you talk about adrenal incidentalomas, I'll just briefly cover this. So it could be because of a functional pathology, it could be functional or it could be non-functional. When we talk about functional versus non-functional, what is the difference? Active, physiologically active hormone production is seen in functional type like pheochromocytoma, cons, aldosteronoma but hormone production is not seen. So more than 70% of them are non-functional. And here students, size is the most important prognostic factor. So when we talk about non-functional adrenal incidentaloma, what is the classical management? The next thing is, what is the size of the patient? If it is less than 3 cm, you will go for observation. What do you mean for observation? 6 to 12 monthly CT or MRI. This is important. If it is more than 5 centimeters, you have to go for surgery because they are seldom benign. If it is 3 to 5 centimeter, now you will have to check whether the patient is fit for surgery, whether the patient's age is less than 50, 55 years because young patients fit for surgery and whenever it is suspicious. When we talk about suspicious, you know, you go for a CT scan. How do you see the density of a tumor? It is Hounsfield unit. So if it is more than 10 Hounsfield unit as a standard rendition on, on CT for adrenal, it is considered to be suspicious of a malignant nature. So if it is more than 15 or you can say it is suspicious, patient is fit for surgery, age is less than 55. If the answer to this question is yes, you will go for surgical excision. If the answer to this is no, then you will go for observation. This is what is adrenal incidentaloma. Again, there was a question on CA breast. Drug of choice for the trastuzumab resistant metastatic cancer. So amongst them, lapatinib. Lapatinib is very, very, very important drug. We have erlotinib, which is used for CA lung. We have vismodegib. This is a pharmacology question, so they will be taking this in detail. So, Vismodegib uh, is again an agent used in basal cell cancer. Then we have uh, Vemurafinib, so it's like Sorafinib, Vemurafinib used for GEST in certain cases. Second line, third line option, it may be used for the CA liver as a HCC in certain third line, fourth line options. 
but yes the answer here is clearly lapartinib remember if it is resistant we will have to go for lapartinib and other you can say um, kit mutation uh, you can say tyrosine kinase inhibitors let us talk about one more question there was a question where the patient presented to you with fracture shaft of the femur patient presented to er after 12 hours remember the patient was hemodynamically stable for that time and now the patient has presented to you in unstable status with respiratory distress and rashes over axilla and chest now what could be the most probable this is a straight forward question it's a fat embolism fat embolism is the classical reason for this this is what is very important then there was a question which is showing you an image can you see this bluish cystic swelling in the floor of the mouth laterally a bit laterally not in the midline it's laterally not much of information i could gather on this whether the clinical description was given or no so this is a classical ranula ranula versus plunging ranula ranula is the origin from the sublingual gland plunging ranula has an origin from submandibular gland remember it is located such that it feels that it is a ranula plunging into the neck but it is not it's a submandibular gland cyst crossing the mylohyoid and presenting on the floor of the mouth also so basically the two entities are totally different there could be an option of sequestration cyst if it was midline non transluminant white in nature the other options are not feasible in this clinical description or this image based description so this is a straight forward question of ranula then there was a question can you see this image this is what is very 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 simple if you see there is a usg showing you something extra like a cap on an ultrasound uh, image like a cap on usg uh, on cap on the gall bladder so what is this this is a straight forward fibrin cap deformity floating gall bladder is quite difficult to or to detect on usg it's very evident when we go for like lap laparoscopy so there you can actually see so here you can see the cap students this is the cap and this is the gall bladder it's a fibrin gall bladder it's a very simple thing then a patient on the question on gi bleed and colon so lot of questions on git like we used to think that okay i ni ct more of general surgery no git is a trend now so 73 year old patient with painless bleeding now what could be the probability it's a you can say a tumor of the colon majority of the choi times or it could be angiodysplasia it could be a meckel's diverticul uh, sorry it could be a diverticulitis colonic diverticulitis so in either of the cases what should be the important thing however since nothing has been given on diverticulitis the first diverticulosis or diverticulitis we would first go for colonoscopy and the ccct so colonoscopy and ccct is the best option when we talk about c a 99 if it is a tumor if it is a malignancy you are planning for a surgery c a 99 pre operative and post operative comparison and hence six monthly or annual comparison is a useful tool for the follow up of the disease or in case you are predicting a recurrence so suppose if pre operative it was 300 and post operative it is 20 or 150 after 6 months it is 20 and then after 2 years it's again 2100 it's a recurrence so this is what is important ca again is a non specific marker so uh, ca is a, uh, i'm sorry I, i told about ca 99 ca is a tool for that we use for follow up ca 199 is actually we use for the hepatobiliary pancreas i take my words back so ca pre operative and post operative is a useful marker for the follow up this is what is very 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 important but not for diagnosis so colonoscopy you can use a double 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 contrast colonoscopy or virtual colonoscopy with uh, 3d reconstruction ct scan they are more important so both of them will help you in beautiful diagnosis next is a patient presents to the er with RTA with fracture of the pelvis with severe hypotension and shock. So patient is in hypotension and shock. Next preferred line of treatment. So I could get these options: blood transfusion, binding of the pelvis and trochanter with the bed sheet, immediate external fixation. Oh, this is not the option in this. So it's the copy paste of the previous question. I was uh, making the question paper. I was just creating uh, the template. Maybe that is why. So here stabilization of patient is very important so first of all you have to go for resuscitation and then you will have to plan for an intervention so i would say that option a is the most feasible option here then there was a question on thorax so all except are false for thymoma when we talk about thymoma it's a benign to malignant conversion based tumor of the mediastinum it is anterior mediastinum where it is found 
yes it is a most common neoplasm it may be missed on x-ray also so when you talk about uh, dysphagia and dyspnea since it is located in the anterior mediastinum and esophagus is located in the posterior so dysphagia is quite 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 rare in this case so i would say option b is far better than option c all except uh, sorry all except are false we are talking about so option b is true and this is what is the this is why we say that it's art of segregation we are segregating where b is a better answer than c now when we talk about the general surgery there was one more question on this instrument so when we talk about its instrument what is this this is a classical mixtures for sep so for you i have brought it straight from my ot it's currently 9:30 and uh, my staff is also very good my they have stayed here my ot assistant has stayed here so this is a classical mixtures for sep that you are seeing and this was as in the image based question so this is a classical mixtures for sep can you see the curve the serrations inside now other options were cockers so what is a cockers this is a cockers standard this is a cockers this is the mixture so no jaw this is simple there is no there are teeth here in cockers so it's a straight or it may be curved but there is a difference of jaw then when you talk about ram place this is a classical ram place that you have so can you see that i or we can say it's looking like a sponge holding so sponge holding type or i base and then adsen is a very simple it's a different type you can see this is an adsen forceps so it was a easy question for you all then there was one more question on anatomy what are the structures in relation to the third part i couldn't gather the options what were the options but one of the options which i got and i felt strongly that this is not the gall bladder this intraabdominal intraperitoneal so gall bladder is never related to the retroperitoneal part of the duodenum so it is not related at all to the third part of the duodenum so this makes it very easy then there was a question on hernia so there was lot of students were not able to gather the language but as far as i could understand from their uh, comments or their uh, their responses that the content was not reduced first and this is the only case when the bowel is forming the part of a sac so when you talk about sac adhered to the bowel no this is not one wall of the sac is formed by the bowel this is what is known as hernia inglesate or sliding hernia on the left colon is a part on the right small intestine or sometimes on both the side it may be the bladder also which might be adhered to the sac so it's very important to delineate the delineate the anatomy so in this case if you reduce the sac uh, if you open up the sac to reduce the content first when you're talking about especially about laparoscopy the best advantage uh, open surgery the best advantage of laparoscopy you can easily deal because you are seeing the content first so this is what is very important when you are doing a laparoscopy but in open surgery this is a mistake that happens with lot of people hernia in glissade is a very tricky scenario your eyes will never see if your brain doesn't know about this case so when a bowel has been located on the outer side of the you can say of the sac it is adhered to one wall usually the posterior wall and this is a scenario when you have to reduce it without reducing the content because if you attempt to open up the sac you might injure the bowel because sac itself is one border of sac itself is by the it's by the bowel so this scenario is known as hernia in glissade in incarceration you will have to do the resection the bowel will not be healthy in this case medial hernia is a different scenario or w shape hernia that's a different whether the bowel automatically can go inside once you attempt reduction but here it's the sac and the bowel which are adhered so students this was all about the recall i hope you enjoyed i apologize if i have not been able to recall anything correctly students it was based upon your recalls that i decided to frame the question which were asked from surgery so do subscribe to my channel do share the links of my discussion with your near and dear friends and do join allen so we at allen next are starting with a new batch offline on 12th of may in delhi in bangalore and we are also coming up in hyderabad and chennai so till then stay tuned to my channel and do download the allen next app it's free of cost there are a lot of important things that you will enjoy in this and it's available on app store also and uh, for the android users it's there on the play store also so till then bye bye